Monticelli here at Bogey Grill with Matt Carey. Matt, how are you doing today? Awesome, man. It's good to be here. So we had a little pickup lacrosse with the Armadillos, and we wanted to catch up and uh, summarize some things we saw at the world's largest outdoor lacrosse party the other night. So you were down on the field. Those pro guys that uh, Coach Galloway put together, there were some beefy, beefy guys out there, weren't they? They were pretty good, man. Um, the size was evident. Uh, the difference between the collegiate players, the Jackson University versus the MLL pros, uh, was pretty substantial. And you could just tell that it was a bad play uh, developing. And one of the things you noticed was the, those guys uh, on the pro team, they didn't play together a lot. Some of them were from a few rattlers there. But when they started getting into a rhythm, especially with their two-man game, it looked like they've been playing together for a while. Yeah, these are guys that are getting together day in, day out, practicing together. Um, they play enough lacrosse, they, they play similar set, sets on the professional level, and they know how to work that two-man game. So it was exciting lacrosse. You had the shot clock that came into effect a couple of times. I'm not, not necessarily a big fan of the shot clock, but in an exhibition game like that, the pace of play was great. Yeah, I think it adds a cool level to the game. Obviously, that kind of favors the pros who are used to that quick transition, getting uh, their offensive set set up a little bit quicker. JU is a work in progress. They're still trying to figure out if that's going to be part of the rules that they're going to be going with. Um, but again, it's something that favored the pros. So you look at the, uh, the, the pros offense, Jordan Wolf and, and, and the boys, it's a uh, Randy stats. It was uh, tough for the JU guys to keep up, especially physically in the two-man game. Absolutely. You're looking at uh, All-Americans, national champions, uh, players of the year at multiple levels, and whether it's uh, junior college, division two, uh, division one players of the year. These are three players in the year. It's quite a combo of watch fans all the field together. One of the things that stood out to me for, for Jacksonville was pretty good ball movement. And when you're throwing the ball through the lane to the likes of Jordan, uh, through the stick of like Jordan Wolf, excuse me, um, Joel White, uh, the ability for those guys to knock down passes, it forced Jacksonville to have to be a little more careful. And you have to zip that ball. You can't just lob a pass through. Absolutely. Two of the Team USA, potential Team USA, uh, long six, Joel White and Liam Williams playing defense against these guys. It really impressed me. J use off ball movement. They scored a lot of goals, but um, off ball cups, quick stick goals. And uh, I like what I'm seeing as far as our offense and transitions. The ability for uh, Sean Ewer and McLean Chiquin and Eric Applegate and the new guy Jeremy Winston, they looked in sync. You know, we didn't see Will Hendrick out there yet. It was really good ball movement. And the way that uh, Wayne Matushik has been playing, the offense looks pretty solid. That, absolutely. I, I, it's been kind of the usual cast of characters and names that we got used to hearing a lot last year. Um, you mentioned one of the rookies. It's Jeremy Winston. That's the new one that impressed you the most in the new cast of characters. On the offensive side of the field, uh, Jeremy Winston was out there a lot. And he was hustling a lot. He was around the ball a lot. He's not afraid to carry the ball and get trapped. Uh, he's a physical kid. And for a freshman, to step right up against those players and make his presence known was impressive. Uh, absolutely. I thought that kid had a great speed dodge. He's definitely going to be a dodger, a creator. Uh, what about on the defensive side? Uh, defensive side, you know, they, they did a pretty good job, the Jacksonville defense. They, they struggled in the two-man game, and team defense, they struggled. Who's the first slide? Who's the second slide? If you go back and watch the video, the second slide wasn't there a few times. And when you come down and double, or when you let your uh, teammates stay one-on-one, -on -one, tough decisions when you have Randy Stats backing you down. Yeah, the, none of those guys, you don't want to come off any of those guys on the pro side. You, know, like, you want to stay out and you're going as much as possible. And that puts defense. But Hunter Forbes at the face-off pass did a nice job on Drew Seminole. What were your, your thoughts? I, yeah. thought that, I thought that was a great battle. Drew Seminole was a great face-off guy, obviously. Proven uh, that he can be on the Division Three level and now in the MLL. Um, but again, I thought that Jay used uh, yeah, held their own at the face offense. Uh, you mentioned who, uh, what other new guys impressed me. Uh, there, there were a, a number of guys. We'll talk about those more throughout the fall and into the spring. But Noah Rubin, uh, number 40. I kept seeing number 40. In the Queens and Lynn games the other day, I kept seeing number 40. Uh, not just picking up the ground ball, but you know, he had a goal against the pros. He had another shot that I'm sure he thought he could capitalize on. So when you see these freshmen, you start seeing their numbers mixing it up. You're like, okay, there's something going on here. So Noah Rubin's another one. Uh, before the game, I you know, talked about the Goldie back that's going on for the starting job at Jacksonville University. Adam Baker did a nice job in goal. 
uh, Ben didn't get a lot of help in the second half. Those goals that uh, Ben Blackman let in, so many of those were on the doorstep. So it'd be interesting to sit in one of those film sessions at JU to see where the breakdowns were because uh, they left Ben uh, hanging out the dry in the second yeah, half. Yeah, he truly couldn't go goals against uh, there's so many of those opportunities that the throws had in the second half were true layups and you can't really go against one of the areas of concern for me, uh, for Jacksonville University, is uh, uh, in the man up. There wasn't good spacing on the man up. And the other one is period from last year, and that's in the clearing game. Jacksonville struggles in the clearing game, and I, it's mind-boggling to me because they should be able to clear. The spacing is not good for Jacksonville. If you go back and watch that game, and it's available on ESPN, the 3D app, and, uh, and on YouTube, look at when Jacksonville struggles in the clearing game. Some of it's bad decision-making, but some of it's bad decisions because the guys just aren't spread out, and they're allowing the riding team to have one guy cover two. So Jacksonville needs to spread out, make better decisions. It was something that, I, to be honest with you, uh, Ben and I thought struggled with last year, and it's got to get uh, cleaned up if Jacksonville's going to make the run to the Southern Conference playoffs like they did last year. Yeah, see what we can do. So for Matt Carey, for Ray Carnicelli, and Lax904.com, and Bogey Grill, we'll be checking with you later on this fall and into the spring. Thank you.